And welcome to the Team Brad Stinson Podcast. I am Brad Stinson, and I am sitting here with a fellow devil dog, Michael Morris. How you doing, brother? Good, man. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Good. Well, first off, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. So thank you, and thank you for your service. Absolutely. So uh, the reason why I brought Michael on is because um, him and I have kind of formed a nice little friendship over the last couple months. Randomly found him online. I don't know. I Googled home inspectors and veteran inspection and services popped up. And I was like, hey, maybe this is a veteran friendly company. So I reached out to Michael and he didn't answer because he's a busy, busy man. He ended up calling me back. He's like, hey, Semper Fi, Devil Dog. And I was like, hey, thanks. And then we had a conversation. He hung up. I had no idea he was a Marine. (laughs) So (laughs) my bad. (laughs) You know, I just want to thank Michael for A, coming on, which I already have, and B, because we are able to work so closely together, we have done a pretty damn good job at coming up with a program that has really helped influence the housing market for our veterans in Grand Rapids or West Michigan in general. Um, When we first started talking, we're kind of stirring the bowl of being on the verge of something. We just didn't know what it was. And I, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were new at our, at, our companies, which Michael just formed his, when was that? December, November of last year? Yeah, last year. Yep, so towards the end of last year. Yep. Coming up on his one year and we just didn't know what we were able to do. And what really was a catapult was we had a Marine client, you know, which one I'm talking about, mm-hmm. who just got back from Afghanistan and he had about, I don't know, maybe 15 offers that he submitted that were just not even considered. And I started getting pissed, like royally pissed off because there's no way in hell that a combat veteran should ever have this much difficulty trying to find a home. So after some uh, late night texts and beating Michael over the head with a blue crayon, (laughs) we, we finally, I finally got him to see the light. Let's not offer a discount. Let's just offer a free pest and termite. And yeah. boom, there it goes. There goes the issue that immediately started making our offers more competitive. That is huge. So I thank you for your patience and due diligence and, you know, being willing to sacrifice that portion of your income to allow more veterans to get into homes you've educated me a lot more in like the lending process and that kind of thing to where it, you know, it made sense. Uh, You know, after thinking about it for a while, it made sense. And since I did it, my phone's been ringing constantly nonstop. Hey, you know, you do veteran, you help veterans out and you do, you you give veterans free termite inspections. And I'm like, yeah, yes I do. And I mean, it's just, that's, yeah, that's what it's been like since, you know, it, it, it was funny when we first started talking about it, you're like, you couldn't wrap your brain around, around what I was saying. And I'm like, dude, if you just give, <laughs> if you just wave this, I guarantee you, your business is going to go And That is, I know that's a hard, hard uh, thing to do when you're a new business owner. You're like, I'm going to put all my trust in this idiot. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, enough about that. Let's, um, you know, <laughs> I just recently started something new, and we're going to kick this off Marine Corps style with doing some 21 rapid-fire questions. 21, huh? Well, we probably won't get through 21. We'll probably get through just just a couple of them (laughs) because we're going to start laughing and we're going to be idiots. You know know how it goes. So, Ah, yep. are you ready to be on the hot seat, devil dog? Let's do this. All right. Here's the first question. How How can you tell if a person is a nerd? How? I'm asking you how. <laughs> What's that? I'm what? asking you how. How can you tell if a person is a nerd? What's the first sign? Um, when they begin their sentence with, well, actually. Well, actually. Eh. What is your best feature? What is my best feature? Yes. Um, Come on, you're dead sexy. My voice. Your voice. You wanna, you, do you want to start whispering? <laughs> your music. So what is your best feature? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give it to I me. Said my voice. My voice. Oh, your voice. You're gonna you're gonna stick to it. Okay. All right. Lame. Who is your favorite superhero and why? Batman. Why? Well, he's the Dark Knight. Well, he comes out of the shadows. Yeah. He's Batman. Oh. Okay. All right. 
not Captain America, not any of the Marvel guys. You, you went no. DC? Batman, 100%, 200%. You went DC, huh? Pretty much. I like Iron Man, but not as much. As- you know what's weird? Like the two most popular comic books is Batman, Superman, DC. But their movies lately Terrible. have been oh, awful. They've been absolutely horrible. Right. And now they're trying, now DC is trying to copy the Avengers momentum with what's it called? Justice League. That's just lame. What's the one that just came out with Venom? I heard that tanked. That, that, I actually went to see that. It's, a, it's not that bad. Or wait, is Venom Marvel? No, Venom, yes, was okay. Mar- is Marvel. Yep. Okay. DC's coming out with Aquaman. I heard that. Like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, moving forward. What is the one thing that annoys you the most? I would have to say that's a tough one. Yeah. A lot first? of stuff annoys me. Yeah. I'd say traffic. Oh, God, that's horrible, especially here in Michigan. Yep. My God. Yep. I-96 being closed between Alpine and Plainfield mm-hmm. since April, and now it's open again, was the bane of my existence, man. Yeah. It it really, truly, I'm shocked I didn't have a stroke, truly, because it was just. Oh, my blood pressure has been oh. definitely up this entire, I mean, it's been since the beginning of summer, uh, 131 North, when you started getting into Rockford and Cedar Springs. and. Yep. And, and it's oh, just, oh, just infuriating because it doesn't even seem like, I mean, I'll give myself an extra 30 minutes, you know, knowing that there's going to be heavy traffic. And yeah, I still, and get even s- when you give yourself 30 minutes, you, you are still late. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. And I hate being late. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah. don't know what, well, I can tell you the, the number one thing that annoys me is when I hear people eat the noises that come out of people's mouths when they eat is aggravates me. Like I can't sit at, I can't have a family dinner. You can't hear me drinking my coffee in the microphone right now. No, because you pressed me out. I didn't touch you. I know. I'm just kidding. I, I can't stand it. It just drives me insane, and I, I don't really understand why or know why, but whatever. It's all good. Describe yourself in three words. <sighs> These are tough. I told no, you. I'm not used to talking about myself. Decide, uh, describe myself in three words. Yep. Dedicated. Definitely hardworking, for sure. And I don't take myself seriously at all. <laughs> well, I can't believe you had to think that long and hard about three words that describe well, yourself. Because I'm, I would say, damn fucking sexy. Yourself. I'm saying that about you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a yacht, what would you call it? Rum runner. Okay. I'll settle for that. What is the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? I get a cup of coffee. Immediately. Okay. It's straight from my bed to the Keurig. We just got done with the rapid fire questions there, Michael Morris, and I know that there were tough ones for you because you don't like talking about yourself. The whole purpose of the rapid fire questions is to get you a little bit relaxed so that I can ask you this next cheesy ass question. So, Michael, tell us about yourself. So, my name is Mike Morris. I own veteran. You like Michael or Mike? It doesn't matter. Mike, Michael. My parents would prefer if everybody addressed me as Michael. Sir Michael. Because that's what they named me, but everybody calls me Mike. Okay. So I've okay. just kind of accepted it, embraced it. But uh, so, yeah, I own Veteran Inspections and Services, and I've been in business for about close to a year now. Um, my, I've been doing home inspections for about four years total. And then just in this last year, I've, I went off on my own, started my own company. What made you start, uh, start out on your own? I wanted to own my own business and it kind of fell in my lap. I had a buddy that owned an inspection company and I started working with them and really just fell in love with the industry. And, uh, there's a lot of potential in the industry and I, there's a, there's a lot of things. I think a lot of people that go in business for themselves is because they think that they can do it better and bigger. So, uh, I took that, that huge stressful leap and, uh, here I am. Awesome. So tell us about your time in the service. Enlisted in the Marine Corps right out of high school at about 96. I think I went in in August of 96. And uh, I was reserves for six years. So I did a six, so actually it was seven years. It was a seven contract. It was 1171 is my MOS, water purification, water dog, whatever, whatever it's called now. And all right. So you joined the Marine Corps in 1996. Correct. I joined the Marine Corps in 1996. 
And uh, that August, August of 96, I shipped out for San Diego. MCRD where, San Diego, whoop, whoop, Hollywood Marine. Yep. And was at boot camp there. Then after that, for anybody that's non, uh, non-infantry MOS related, I went to Marine Combat Training. MCT. MCT. And then after that, I reported to my duty station in Battle Creek. And that's where I did my seven years as a reserve. You had to do seven years? I believe it was, yeah, it was seven years from 96 until 2003 is when I hmm. was discharged. So you were in the Marine Corps when 9-11 happened, huh? I was. What was that like? I was like, well, I'm going to war. I mean, you know, I knew it. And it, it's kind of interesting because even after 9-11, we did not have any word or any indication whatsoever that we were going to be deployed, if at all. No way. The Marine Corps did not pass word? No. <laughs> so, uh, I think they got, I, like I said, I was discharged in 2003, and I think about a year after that, I think they deployed. Uh, but that was already, you know, I'd already been out for a year. So, I did all of my military service in uh, peacetime. Nice. So we evaded, invaded Iraq in 2003. So you would have gotten out in August, 2003. We invaded. Yeah. I mean, even if you were, they, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it all makes sense to me. Um, so what, how was that transition when you got out? Was it, you know, I don't know what it's like to serve during peacetime you know, prior to 2001, even though we had conflicts and technically we've been at war since August 2, 1990, but there was not any major conflicts or wars going on throughout the, you know, throughout the late nineties, early 2000, well, shouldn't say early 2000, just the year 2000. And I joined in 2004 when the wars were going on. And I don't know what, what I couldn't imagine, like, what did you guys do? Like, what was that like on a daily basis? That, that's a really good question. I mean, all we did was show up to drill, did our MCTs. Uh, we, did, we would go out to the field, run our gear. We would a lot of maintenance. I mean, the majority of the time I was in, it was cleaning weapons in the armory. Yeah, I can only imagine the jackassery that they, that they would make you do. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it would, you can, because you have to go to, you have to, you have to drill. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so that, you know, anything and everything that could think of for you to do, you'd do. So yeah. we, we cleaned weapons. Uh, we, you well, probably we, we cleaned, off, cleaned right? everything. You probably cleaned things. like crazy, didn't you? What's that? Did you clean like clean? Like, yeah, like, I mean, crazy? cleaning, field cleaning. Day? My God. Like when we, my first deployment, we went out on the 13th Mew. We were on the Pearl Harbor and on our way out. It was jackassery. I mean, you want to talk about those fuck fuck games that, you know, your command likes to play on you, your NCOs, your, your staff NCOs. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. We, we were walking around our birthing wearing pillowcases on our feet because they they just kept failing us for field days. And we're like, you s- <clears throat> go watch the Sopranos or something. Get right. out of here. Right. And, we got, so we go into Iraq, we come back and that from the time that we got back on ship after, after Iraq, all the way home was the greatest three months of the, of my time in the Corps. It was awesome, man. Nobody messed with us. We just did, you know, we just worked out, beat the crap out of each other and just rode along. It, yeah. I mean, it was awesome. And the Navy would like part the seas every time we walked down the hallway. They wouldn't make eye contact. I don't know what the, what they were told, but those Marines, you know, they're crazy bastards when you go in the war. They're even crazier when you get out. I don't know, but it was it was insane. Uh, but it was a, it was a great time. So, anyways, we're we're going on tangents here. So you got out in two thousand three. Like, how was that? How was your transition? What did you do? I mean, you know, coming out of peacetime, the transition for me, the seven years was long enough. I was ready to be done. Yeah, that that would get to you. I was done after four. Screw this. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. Your situation was a little different than mine, you know? Yeah. I mean, let's, let's be honest. So, you know, getting out, uh, it wasn't really that much of a transition. You know, I got my, 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 my Eagle Golden Anchor pin. I, I don't, what, what was that thing that they gave you? Was it like a tie pin or was like it something? I don't know what it was. It was like a little. Where? where like, what are you talking? When? With my DD-214 and my. I don't know what you're talking about. It was like this. It was like a, uh, it was just an Eagle Golden Anchor, an EGA pin. I have to find it. you got out? What's that? After you got out or at, at graduation? When, when they gave me my DD-214 on my last day, I'd turned in all my gear and, you know. Oh, did they didn't get me. They, they, no, I didn't get that. But I didn't really give a shit because I skipped the whole quarter of a mile to the S1 shack at 12.01 a.m. <laughs> got my DD-214, threw my boots on the wire or you know, up on the, on the cable. And, dude, I probably drank the entire night until yeah. the time I had to leave for my flight the next day. Yeah. The happiest day of my life, man. Yep. Um, but so, so you transition out. What did you do? Did you, I know you said you kind of had an easier time. Um, but even, even if you haven't gone, gone to war, you know, you still have that tra- transition struggle, you know, cause there's maybe not, not necessarily a reservist, but I know active duty, you can't do anything by yourself. So you, you kind of lean on the people to your right and left. You know, so it's, it's, that's a, that's a difficult tra- transition for, for a person on active duty. Yeah. Um, I can't really speak to the reserve side because I wasn't a part of that. Well, you know, when I, when I got out, it wasn't, uh, the, I mean, the transition was kind of, I still didn't have any direction. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going to go. What, what, what you're going to be when you grew up. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I mean, I didn't have any clue. And I mean, for the longest time, I didn't have any clue what I wanted to do. Uh, it took me, you know, I, I went back to college in, was it 2005, 2006, something around there. So uh, I, I, and I, I still didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So, so what did you do? So what did you end up doing? I ended up, Enrolling in the police academy at GRCC. That's a great way to transition. <laughs> police. Force. I'd always, I'd always wanted to be a cop, and but it was just the, the, the really making sure that's something that I wanted to do, you know. And then so I, I, I got through that. I got through the academy, uh, and then I was a police officer for six years. And six but, years is that we said six. Yeah. Yep. So I just, uh, but, but again, it, it really wasn't the, the job that I thought it was going to be first of all, but then I, I, I wasn't really happy with it. Why weren't you happy um, with it? It was just because I w- I was always an entrepreneur at heart. I always wanted to run my own business. I would always just dream of, you know, being able to own my business one day. And, and, uh, so how did you become a home inspector? Yeah. Like I it just pretty much just fell in my lap and I ran with it. Cool. Um, cool. And, so you know, here, here I am. so that, that brings us up to now. So you started your own business and I'm honored to do work with you. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's been quite, quite awesome, you know, being, you know, trying to build out a team of people that are true veteran advocates and witnessing the, the way that, the VA home loan is starting to be perceived now through mm-hmm. our efforts. You know, we, you know, I think I posted this on Facebook yesterday or two days ago, whatever you, you did some stupid video, <laughs> which is, you know, stupid videos actually get a lot of attention. I know you all videos in general, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a more personalized content. Mark Zuckerberg and his team prefer to have it, you know, content that's worthwhile and people like so i shared it and i i, I started thinking about it I'm like holy shit i think 90 percent of the people 90 percent of my veteran clients have gone through you I, th- I can only think of maybe two and i had no say in that but everybody else like now that we started this free pest and termite inspection I make, you know, I have the agents call me like, look, we have to talk this through before you present because the way you present it is huge. If you don't present it the right way, I mean, you know, when the buyer's agent presents the offer, presentation is everything. Mm -hmm. You have to say the right things at the right time. And that's what I say. 
Paragraph 15, seller will pay for the pest and termite inspection. Mm -hmm. Look, we're not, we're going with Michael Morse. He's not going to charge a pest and termite inspection. So the fact that we are offering to pay for it is awesome. We're getting our offers looked at, but the listing agent does not need to freaking know that we're using Michael Morse <laughs> with the free pest and termite, you know? So it, it's been working out very, very well. And it's been, what I'm happy to see is the fact that we are now getting VA offers that are being considered in multiple offer s- situations. Not only that, they're getting accepted over multiple offers and they're not the highest ones. The plan is coming together. It's all coming together. I mean, it took a long time. Yeah. That's, that's it, one of my things is being patient enough to, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but yeah, it's yeah. great when you can finally start to see and get kind of a, a soul of its own. So, so let's talk about the home inspection. Why is it important to get a home inspection? Well, in general, uh, getting a home inspector, regardless who it is, um, you know, kind of the cliche is the home is the biggest investment that you'll ever have, you know, you'll ever make. But uh, truth be told, we were kind of talking about this, that, you know, through the whole real estate transaction, the home inspector is the only unbiased party in the whole thing. And I, and I always want to kind of make a quick segue in that is, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, everybody's bad and they're always in to just, you know, screw the buyer over just so they can get their money and, you know, and, and move on. What I mean by that is that having a third party person that's unbiased in that process is absolutely worth its weight in gold to the lender, to the real estate agent and to the buyer, because that inspector is a good inspector is looking out first. Yeah. No, I want to, I want to just clarify something here with the VA home loan. The appraiser is also a third party that's not involved with the transaction. Um, the appraiser is not hired by the VA. The appraiser is a VA approved appraiser. They work for independent third companies. They do not work for the lender. They do not work for any of the agents. They work technically, if they work for anybody, they work for the veteran. Same with you. You are a third party individual company that's looking out for the veteran. And the way I I always describe it, and I think this is probably the, the best way to do it, is if you think back to field day, you know, you would have multiple layers of inspections before you got your CO inspection the next day on Friday. So the NCOs would come through the first round of inspectors. They'd come through and they just put their hands in everywhere. They just find everything, call everything out. I mean, even the deepest, darkest corners of your 12 by 12 room. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's amazing how, how those bastards could take a one hour project and turn it into eight and never, you know, just never approve us. But the next inspection got easier and the next one got easier until you get to your CO inspection. And that guy just walks in and says, how are you doing Stinson? I'm doing good, sir. How are you? Looks good in here. And he just turns around, walks away. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of what a home inspection is. You're getting into the nooks and crannies and you're checking out the, the, reliability of everything and you are the front lines of defense so you would be able to tell them hey this may be an issue you know Um, now I I just want to preference this to a home inspection is not a mandatory thing but it's highly encouraged to get you are highly encouraged to get one however a VA home loan you are required to get a pest and termite inspection you know so Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just wanted to throw some clarifying things out before we got down and dirty with this. So, so what are the types of things that you do on a home inspection? Like, what do you check? The better question would be, what don't I check? Yeah, what um, don't you check? No, I'm just you know, I, 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 I check everything from the roof covering all the way down to the foundation, everything in between. Uh, I, I look at every single little thing in the house. I love it when you post, post photos of you in a crawl space. <laughs> I don't like being in crawl spaces, but I'm glad you enjoy it. But no, uh, that's part of the job. And, and honestly, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. You know, I, I enjoy getting down dirty and get my hands dirty and getting down there. Uh, you know, it's for a good reason. Yeah. I mean, you are protecting them from any, yeah. any potential damage, you know, and you know, let's call spade a spade here. Not everybody's honest. Right. So, 
if somebody lists the home and they say, yeah, there's never been water in my basement. Sure. You know, you have ways to identify that. Right. And, and call it out. And it's because you do it on a daily basis. Yeah. Home buyers are not buying homes every single day. So they don't know that they don't know. No, that's, a good, and understand that's a good point because what, I was talking to one of my clients the other day and he's like, man, when I walked through the house and when he came in, you know, and walked through the house, I didn't see three quarters of the stuff that you're showing me. And I was like, oh, you're exactly right. You're not, you, when you walk through the house, you're not looking at this through the critical eye. You're looking at where are you going to put your sectional and yeah. where, where is the dining room table going to fit? And is the fridge going to fit in this space? You know, those, you know, what, what room is the kids going to have? I mean, those are the things that you're looking at. You're not looking at it. Yeah. Through the critical eye. And, and I just want to clarify something too, because he's not a, a required thing. He's going to tell you stuff like, Hey, this water heater, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, may or may not go out in the next three years. Right. You know, like things like that. It take it for what it's worth. It's not like you're, it, it, you can't fail his inspection. <laughs> you know, he's telling you things like, Hey, Keep an eye on this, you know, kind of like a, a car tune up, you know, like, is, is that a good way to describe it? I would say that most people wouldn't think of purchasing a 20 or $30,000 car and not give it a test drive. Yeah, it's true. So you multiply that by how many tens of thousands of dollars to purchase a home. Yeah. Why would you ever want to that you're going to be paying on every month for the next 30 years for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. like you want a home inspection and you want it to be done by a person you can trust. And I've, I've met Michael numerous times. And I know that he will never bullshit you and he will tell you exactly what he sees, how he sees it. And you know, he's never going to talk you into anything and talk you out of anything. That's right. That's, the client deserves yeah. it. You know, they pay a lot of money. For a home inspection and so uh, I when I get there I want to earn it correct and there's things that are required by the VA that Michael does pest and termite is one of them um, well and septic correct correct radon testing um, getting radon, into, uh, radon is not required by the VA but that is an additional thing that he does right that's true. If you're talking required, it'd be what the well and septic, the, the termite inspection. I think well, that's the VA it. requires the water test. And the, well, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So when I do a well and septic, I also take the water yeah. test because that's required. So, so that's just part of it. Yeah. It's just part of that inspection. So, you know, I, Michael and I have been talking over the, well, we've been trying to talk over the last yeah. I don't know, month. We've been crazy busy. But we're starting to swirl the bowl again, trying to come up with new ideas, how we can make change. How can we bring more attention to the VA home loan? And I think, we, I think we're on to something. Yeah. You know, like draw kind of more of a VA home buying tips and tricks. I don't know. We got to think of a name for it. But I, I you know maybe not necessarily a quote unquote seminar, but something regular, more of a regular uh, broadcast or something like that each, each yeah. month capture a new, you know, take on a new topic or, you know, whatever. I mean, we can, you know, there's details, but yeah, we see enough throughout the month that we can really put together a good, some good content and, and things. And well, you know, what I would really love is basing our, uh, our, our topics off of questions that people ask us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, I would rather have, you know what, I mean, I'm working on my own, my own podcast or vlog or whatever you want to call it. I'm working out my schedule for the next year. I've already got my plans for the first quarter ready to record that. But in a, in a perfect world, I'd rather just throw all that away. And if I just be answering questions from people, uh, that would, that would be ultimately what I want. So, you know, that'd be great if, uh, if, if I could spend the rest of my days educating on the VA home loan, right. by God, I would. Right. <laughs> you know, um, I enjoy that. I enjoy presenting in front of people, like especially realtors. Like I, I just recently did a, um, a lunch and learn class at a brokerage who I was easily 
the youngest person in the room by about 20 years. And those agents usually typically are the ones that have the bad taste in their mouth about the VA home loan. And I was not prepared for that demographic, <laughs> if you will. And so when, when I started to kick it off, I was like, I looked around the room and I was like, holy shit, game on, let's go. You know? So I was like, I took it as a challenge and I knew within the first, you know, five to 10 minutes, you get your hecklers, you, you get your skeptics and doubters, you know, yeah. well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Then you just drop your knowledge, VA tsunami knowledge bomb, boom. Bam. And yeah, you, you handle their question and they look at you all dazed and confused. So now I, I knew that they're ready to receive said knowledge for the next half an hour or well, hour and a half. The way everything's been worded and the way things have been for the last forever you know, as far as the misconceptions of the VA loan and, 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 and just, you know, I mean, so you, you, you see that stuff enough, you believe it and you think that's what it is. Yeah, it's 100% true. And you know, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, a true test of character. Well, everybody messes up in life. Everybody. I mean, we've all made mistakes. Absolutely. Everybody's made mistakes. And if anybody says that they're perfect, they're full of shit. Okay. But the true test of character is getting up, dusting yourself off, recalibrating, reloading. Oh, that was such an awesome. Getting back out there. I saw that post. Okay? That's like it truly is. You have to yeah. keep moving forward. You have to learn from those mistakes. You know, today I did my first, I did my first direct to the veteran class. Uh, yeah, well, I'm a, huge, I'm a huge Grant Cardone fan. So, you know, he, he, he if you feel uncomfortable, that means you, you're, you're doing, you're doing it right. That's yeah. the direction you need to, need to move. There's, There's no growth in the comfort zone. Right. Absolutely no growth. So you have to continue to, to grow. And if you want to grow, you have to get uncomfortable. Yep. And what better way to get uncomfortable with something, you know, get out of your, your comfort zone than, the, than to serve the guys that have always lifted you up. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in your, your darkest hour, a Marine is there for you. Right. hundred percent. And that's what you're ingrained with and instilled with. And why the fuck not? Why, why I couldn't think of a better room of people to do my first veteran direct class to, which I knew was going to suck. Right. But you embrace the suck and you just, you learn from it and you move forward. And that's what the VA is doing. They've learned from the shit of the, of the two thousands. They've learned from their mistakes in the past. As with anybody that's made mistakes in the past, if you continuously hold it above, above their head, they're never going to, they're never going to get over it. They're never right. going to grow. Yep. That's what's happening with the VA. You know, there's been some fantastic changes through the VA over the last five to 10 years that they're getting absolutely no credit for because people still blame the VA for all the things that they think they know and they don't mm -hmm. know it. You know, the most, most frustrating one is the VA appraisal. Everybody likes to blame the VA for everything. Well, the VA is going to take 45 days for them to get an appraiser out here. Well, I call bullshit because the VA doesn't care about hiring appraisers. An appraiser is an independent third party that, is, that has done enough appraisals to qualify to be on the VA approved list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only that, the VA has mandated strict timeline requirements. So a lender has to order it. Once the lender orders it, the appraiser has 24 hours to make contact. From the time that they make contact, they have five days to get out there unless they're in a super rural area or there, there has to be notes. There has to be a reason why. And from the time that I order it, they have 14 days to complete and upload it into the portal. And if they don't, the VA is going to really come down on them. So tell me how that's 45 days. Right. Tell me how the VA is backed up. Well, what was that one that you, that uh, one that you closed on not too long ago from beginning to end? How long did it take? 24 days. And I had, yeah. I had Tidewater and a reconsideration of value of prior. I mean, this, hit, this hit so many things that I hear. Right, like everything that could have happened in that process did pretty much. Yeah, I mean it was it was a 
Murphy's Law loan. You know, I mean, it was just insane. I had prior VA foreclosure. So now we're talking about using only your bonus entitlement. So $144,001 or higher. And the appraiser came out on, on the home that was a purchase price of one forty nine. dollars called Tidewater. We had comps to support Tidewater. Tidewater is not scary. Everybody thinks Tidewater is scary. But the we lost Tidewater. Value came in at one forty. dollars Shit, we need to be at 144.001 or higher. Well, I talked to all the agents, said, hey, let's have a conversation with the seller. Let's make sure that if the value comes back at 144.001, they're okay with it. Yes, so we met in the middle, okay? Submitted it to the ROV, reconsideration of value level at the, at the VA, and kind of told the story. Told, told the entire narrative of what's going on. I need this home to come back at 144,001 or higher. Within a week, I got it back from the VA with our value at 145. Boom, deal back on. Magic. You know, like it's sorcery. That, that never happens. That, that does not happen with the other loans, period. I mean, you will not get value at all with the other loan programs. That's why the VA one is the, the best financing on the planet. When it's done correctly, mm-hmm. that's the key. That, I did it's that. Be done correctly, right? I did that. She and she was get, going through a divorce. She it was finalized the Wednesday before closing. So she the divorce was finalized. She changed her name. Didn't tell anybody on Friday. Closing was Monday at nine a.m. We closed three hours late because we had to change all the paperwork because our yeah. computers were down. But of noon on Monday, she had her home six days before the contract date to 24 days start to finish. I mean, that, that's freaking phenomenal. Drop mic. And that even beat the national average of 26 days. Yeah. You know, like it just, come on people, give it a chance. Right. right? So on one that, what, so one that goes well from beginning to end. One that goes one from, from beginning to end. I mean, it just, it really depends. Cause there's always those, you never know what you don't know until you start getting into processing, right? So they could call out a, a crack paint, cracked and peeling paint, whatever. Okay, so you got to strip it and repaint it. Not right. a big deal because if, it, if it's called out for the a VA loan appraisal process, it's going to be called out on all the others because paint is an external protectant and a lender is not going to give you money on a home that's not protected. Mm-hmm. Termites can get in, weather damage, everything else. Right. Um, but I mean, in a, the, I think the quickest you can legally close a loan from start to finish is eight days, eight business days. So there's your new goal. So that's, yeah, I know. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It, it, dude, I'd social media that one to the yeah, day right. I die. Um, right. Your but, phone would start smoking. Yeah. Cause it, it, you know, that would have to be, I mean, everything start. To, yeah. That is a good goal. New goal, eight days. Eight. There you go. It's a new goal. So um, let's uh, start wrapping this up. I appreciate you coming on and uh, taking the time to come on the podcast. Hopefully I increase my viewership a little bit. I know your wife's now going to listen. Right, yeah. Like, my wife doesn't listen. <laughs> well, like I told you before, I'm on the, the Brad Stinson podcast. I've made it yes, in life. Have. You, you, you have it. not lived until you've been on Brad's. Check podcast. that one off the bucket list. Done. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, you know, once we get our new, new stuff rolling, you know, you'll have to come back on and talk about it with all 14 people that listen. It might be 15 now, but all of us who are listening and let's do it, man. Let's do it for our brothers. Let's do it for the ones that aren't here anymore to purchase a home. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we we owe it to honor them. All right. Well, it's going to be fun. I think we'll have a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. And get more veterans in the homes. So I appreciate it, brother. Have a good week. And tune in next week. Brad Stinson, I'm out of here. Thanks, Brad.